Got that Neil Smith bat in the background now. I'm loving the backdrop, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got the bookshelf up. And uh, matter of fact, I was just looking for some things to put up there. I haven't got all the books on yet, but uh, found the Neil Smith bats. Uh, he signed He signed the red one. The other one's just engraved with his name. But uh, yeah, pretty cool deal there for sure. So That's um, really cool, man. Almost yeah. as cool as winning the wild card matchup against the Dolphins, dude. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and old fashioned too. You know that was old retro uh, Pat playoff Pat <clears throat> and uh, some good good old fashioned Chiefs football there. Great to watch. Uh, there was in one moment in the game where I was like, "Man, we might lose this game." I felt good the whole time. It was stress free game. That was the first time <laughs> I've had a stress free game this year. And what better time for it to come around? Yeah, no kidding. I mean, uh, we, we'll get into kind of my experience being there at Arrowhead, coldest game in, in Arrowhead history, fourth coldest playoff game of all time. Pretty, pretty wild stuff there with, uh, <laughs> with everything that was going on at that game. But what a freaking win. We just got the results of the Bill Steelers game, so we know we'll be heading on the road for Mahomes' first ever playoff game. Uh, we'll definitely be talking about that later this week, but first let's jump into the chiefs player of the game, man. This is brought to you by Absolutely. Atlas saloon as always great partner for us here on the fastest 40. They are, their building's been around a long time since the 1800s up there in Excelsior Springs, downtown Excelsior to be exact, but they didn't start brewing their own beer in house until 2018. Today they have about 10 craft beers on tap with several events going on weekly, whether it's free pool on Tuesdays or open mic nights on Wednesdays or even, you know, the free beer on Thursdays when you wear that Atlas tee. A lot going on in downtown Excelsior, and the Atlas is definitely a hot spot for any Chiefs game, so make sure you check it out if you're ever up in the Excelsior Springs area. So, <clears throat> for me, I know where I'm going. Who is your player of the game? I'm rolling with the kicker, man. Harrison Bucker, mm. uh, another guy, uh, one of the, the the several guys we're going to talk about here uh, about this game. But one of those guys who got robbed out of that All Pro selection, the AP All Pro selection, came into the wild card game and just continued on the success he was having all year. He went four for four on field goals and two for two on extra points. The man was lights out as he's been all year so far. I'm giving it to Harrison Bucker. Yeah, man, he's been automatic. And and like you said, the fourth coldest game um, in, in NFL history, and he's able to still go out there and kick cinder blocks, which is just phenomenal, man. And uh, <laughs> he was a huge part to separating the Chiefs from the Dolphins, you know, midway through the game in the second and the third until we got that final touchdown. So um, he, he, he played a huge role in, in getting that dub. No, I totally agree. The dude had to be on fire. We... <laughs> We couldn't really get it done in the red zone, so love the Harrison Butker pick. Obviously scored the most points on the night. For me, I'm going Rasheed Rice. Everything he did, being a rookie in that game, is just outstanding. Ended up with 130 yards and a touchdown. He also set the rookie record for receiving yards and receptions in that game. And in the coldest game in Arrowhead history to do that, I think is pretty damn impressive. Even more so, you know, he was a block in the back call away from having a buck 40 and two touchdowns. So, yep. you know, an incredible stat line that could have been that much better. What I really want to highlight with him was just how great he was at finding those soft spots in the in the defense whenever they were running that zone coverage. He, uh, Mahomes had to scramble here and there. And Rasheed Rice has proven that they have a good chemistry. They're good at improvising together. And that was apparent in this game for sure. Yeah. And just his run after the catch as well. The dude was racking up some yak <clears throat> and you just, you love to see it from a young guy who was able to, to make some defenders miss and fight for some hard yards. Um, so yeah. I just loved everything from number four. T Swift was handing out high fours from the suite to yeah. everybody after he scored that touchdown and deservingly. So, I mean, the guy balled the hell out. I do not want to get out of this segment without giving a shout out to Trent McDuffie and Legereus Sneed, though. I think without the performances of these two players, those two are the clear players of the game. Maybe if you want to throw George Karloftis in there for what he was able to do. But yeah, man, just 
the most complete game that I think we've seen from Kansas City this year. At least that's my opinion. So a lot of guys that could definitely be recognized for this, you know, honor, so to speak, on the show. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, well said for sure. And just to add on to that list, I think there's a couple of guys in the interior line that we cannot forget where you're battling down there in the trenches, man. And that shit hurts when it's that cold. Let me tell you for sure. Mm. That shit hurts down there, man. You get your foot stepped on. You're getting your, your arms smacked and, and you're getting helmets cracked into the arms and taking helmets to the side of the knee and stuff like that, man. It, it's tough yeah. down there. And so those guys specifically in the interior O-line, man, had a hell of a game, dude. There's uh, no pressure on Pat. There was a couple, you know, as far as the outside guys go on the tackles, a couple penalties, a um, couple, couple missed blocks. But overall, I think the offensive line played – really great football and really created some holes for Isaiah Pacheco. But um, I want to give them guys, those guys some love before we moved on here. But yeah, dog, let's, let's talk about the game. And, and before you kick off with your experience here, um, let's bring this, let's, let's bring this in with, uh, with better homes and garden here. So Katie Lawrence at better homes. Um, she is serving the Kansas city, Missouri area, and she's going to take care of all that dirty work for you. If you are trying to buy, sell or build a home. And so, if, you, if you're looking to do that, you know, whether it's it's next week or it's next month or it's three months away, you got plans for the year, you can get started now and get that get all that prep work done so that you're ready to rock and roll when that house finally comes up when you find the one you want. So, um, Dan, we had, a, we had a cool opportunity here uh, with the Fastest 40 to give away a couple of tickets to a couple of fans of the show. Um, tell us about your experience, your experience at the game and the fourth coldest game of the year or of the of the history of the NFL, man. Oh boy. Um, obviously besides getting the opportunity to chuck the deuce up to Tyree kill and the Miami dolphins at the end of the game, there was a much larger journey getting there. And I think it started with us getting, getting together about one o'clock to meet up for the tailgate. We we're in the bus until about two 30 waiting on, you know, traffic and the gates to open and everything like that. <clears throat> Finally get in there, set up the tent, uh, had three industrial heaters in there. So really not terribly cold inside the tent. We, we were lucky enough to get some walls up and everything like that. But once we tore that sucker down, it was like a slap to the face <laughs> by far the coldest experience of my life. I had two pairs of leggings on sweatpants, thermal insulated pants on top of that is my exterior layer. And that's just the bottom half, not to mention two pairs of socks and multiple feet warmers in each layer of sock. <laughs> and uh, on the top, I had two thermal shirts, a hoodie, my winter, thick winter coat, jersey, two gloves, two hats, gator mask that went up to about here, and a scarf around it. Now, I was good until the mid-third quarter. But there were people around us that I was like, how are you here right now? There was a guy there in like a hoodie and like maybe two hoodies on. There was another woman across the aisle from us who fell down and like was passing out. At first, I thought it was the cold, but I think she was just pissed drunk. But when you combine <laughs> that, when you combine that with the cold, it's like a serious situation. So they had to get someone up there to yeah. go help her down, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was about five minutes into the game. We didn't see her again. Um, oh, nice. I think the craziest part was going to the restroom and seeing at least three to four guys at a time on the ground sitting down in the restroom with their shoes off, trying to like change the the you know foot warmers in their boots or warm their feet up. And I was just like, man. Never in a million freaking years would you catch me sitting on this damn floor. I don't care how oh. freaking cold I am. There's no way in hell I'm sitting on this piss ridden yeah. floor. <laughs> yeah, man, that is that that is that bathroom is it has a unique smell, man. It's there's nothing like the an Arrowhead bathroom. It was foul. It was foul damn. what I walked into. Yeah, so I, I saw a report today that 14 people in the last you know since the game since the game was played or since the game ended until you know a couple hours ago 14 people went to the hospital for 
cold-induced in injuries from the game. 14 people. I don't know if you saw the guy with no shirt on. He went yesterday. Yeah, watch the broadcast the next day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too what bad, a fool. Man. What a fool. Yeah, there was no yeah, chance I was taking any of those layers off. If anything, yeah. I was about to run to the team store to get another layer. I mean, by mid-third, cold had broken through everything for me. <clears throat> you know, if I could do it differently, I probably am grabbing ski goggles. Because you're breathing out through this mask, yeah. and all the condensation's yeah. coming out, and you just got icicles collecting on your mask. Yeah, the All the air mustache. was going up whenever we're breathing out, because the wind's blowing at us. So it's going up hitting my eyelashes and freezing on my eyelashes and my eyebrows and then freezing on my cap. So I have a layer of ice on my cap right on my forehead, icicles on my eyebrows. And when I closed my eyes, they were sticking together because the ice was sticking them. So about every five <laughs> minutes, I pull the gloves up, do one of those numbers and then we we're good to go. But I mean, I've just never experienced that in particular before, at least not since, you know, running in the snow when I was doing 75 hard a couple years ago. It yeah, was like, yeah. it was, it was serious. Um, cold, coldest experience, but man, so awesome. I felt like I went through some sort of like physical trauma the next day because I was just worn the F out. Yeah. Like your body is just going through so much energy to keep you warm throughout yeah. that game it was just beat brother <laughs> yeah but we had a couple other cool memories from the game you know we had the uh the ice mustache we were watching here in the basement and uh <laughs> i mean as soon as andy popped up and he had crystals on his mustache i was like this is iconic and then we had another oh, one yeah. later on in the game where uh, uh patrick mahomes cracked his helmet right through the middle man and I shit you not, man, as soon as that happened, I looked over at Katie. I think Strato was here at that point. I said, this is the moment we will remember when we win the Super Bowl. We're going to point back and say Patrick cracked his helmet that year. And then we went on to win the Super Bowl. Like it was, that was that, <laughs> that type of moment for me, for sure. So I actually cracked a helmet of mine uh, in, in uh, Pee Wee football. I cracked it right up the side, man. And uh, my dad sent me a picture of, of, of Patrick today. And he's like, does this remind you of anything? I was like, damn, I didn't even <laughs> think of that. That's crazy. So, um, That's yeah, so a couple, couple crazy, crazy moments, man, from, from just one game, you know, a, a lot of different iconic photos and moments. And I, I got oh, a yeah. really cool picture of Rasheed Rice, too, getting his first touchdown in the playoffs. I think that'll be one that I try to get blown up and, and hung up in the shop for sure. I think one of the coolest cuts I've seen was of Mahomes' helmet and they put it next to like a silhouette of a Grim Reaper and it's like, yeah. damn, foreshadowing because now we're getting ready to go play Buffalo and that was when that quote really came out and everything. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think there's something to that for sure. I'm definitely a superstitious guy and yeah. <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. So I feel like there's something to that. Uh, you know, that the way that that played out. But, man, the mustache thing is crazy. I know Megan said she wanted a picture of that blown up to put in our house. Just Andy yeah, Reid yeah. with the crystals on the on the mustache. One of the that coolest moments was at the very end, which I didn't get to experience this because at this point we scored that touchdown. We go up uh, 26-7, which ended up being the final score of this one, obviously. And it was like, all right, let's hit the freaking bus. Let's get the hell out of here. Everybody's freezing their butts off. Um, let's make way so we can clear out before, you know, we get to any traffic issues. Yeah. And uh, yeah. right, like I, I kid you not, right when we get to the parking lot is you hear the swag surf start popping off and just seeing the crowd on the broadcast. I mean, infectious, man, like. That's going to end up being one of those songs. It's like the anthem for this playoff run. You know what I mean? Like yeah. something where it's carrying a little more weight, which it carries weight for our tailgate group anyway, because we play that freaking song every time, every Sunday anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. For sure. I think it started a couple weeks ago. I, I definitely remember in L.A. last week they were playing that um, in L.A. And, and Chiefs were getting down. Yeah. So, um, that was a Willie Gay request, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yep. So let's talk about the game a little bit, Dan. Uh, we'll we'll jump into some uh, some records um, that we're looking at that that Patrick broke and the Chiefs have, have broken as well um, as of late. Yeah. But uh, as a team, man, you know we we've already talked about a little bit of a full scale. You know, win mm. all three sides of the football and just a more fit, like the Chiefs went out there and just got after the Dolphins. You know, there was a couple conversations before the game where. Dolphins came out early and they wanted to establish that they're not afraid of the cold. And Tyreek Hill came out in just a t-shirt. And when I heard these things, I was like, you know what? Maybe these guys are ready to play ball. And the Chiefs come out, punch them in the mouth, and then they just bully them the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. They just get the Dolphins get bullied the whole game and on every side of the ball. And it wasn't just, you know, defense taking after them. You know, the, the clip of the Jerry Sneed has been a hot one where he's just bullying Tyreek Hill into the ground, which you gotta love to see. As a Chiefs fan, so good, and uh, one because he's you know on your side of the ball, but two, it's against Tyreek, right? So that just makes it a little bit sweeter for sure. But uh, <laughs> that team came out, played solid football. Um, I mean, just well prepared. It looked like Andy had the team ready to rock and roll. I mean, one to battle the the battle of the weather, but two, the game plan was solid. Man, we stuck with the core guys. We got after them, and we we really didn't lay off like the offense kept going they kept getting stalled but we kick a field goal but they kept continuing on with the pressure which is good to see but uh a couple playoff records here dan um as we sit now patrick mahomes has had 15 uh, postseason games 12 of those have been in arrowhead the other three super bowls so this man is about to play his first away game in the postseason this coming weekend when we go to buffalo Sunday oh, at yeah. 5.30, which is just incredible to think about when you're looking at somebody's playoff record. One, he's 12-3, wow. and three, but he's also never played a, an away game. And, and people think that's a – I mean, there's there's uh, Cincy fans out there, Buffalo fans out there, like, this man can't play on the road. Uh, he's going to get his ass kicked as soon as he plays on the road. Like, this only <laughs> means great things for us. But Patrick's record is better on the road than it is at home. So – I'm not worried about that factor sure. at all. I'm looking forward to this, and it just—it's just another note to to how great he is, how great he will be once it's all said and done. Yeah, I think he's got actually two more road victories than he has home victories, but the same number of losses, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. It's like 38 and 36 in favor of the road. But I'm excited to see what he does on the road, man. I think you know with. With everything that we've seen historically, he he keeps it poised. It seems like crowd noise almost fuels that offense at times where they're like, oh, you want to get loud with us? Well, let's quiet these guys up then. Like, I feel like that's the mentality that we've seen a ton with that. And that is definitely exciting. But, you know, absolutely agree. We just... We were we were more physical at the end of the day than the Miami Dolphins. They didn't seem prepared. Their body language, like... On the sideline, you could tell from up in the stands that they weren't having it. Like, one of the funniest parts was when, you know, the crew that sits behind us um, at the Chiefs games, one of them points out, hey, they're rolling another heater out for these guys. (laughs) And the (laughs) op guys were out there carting this big industrial heater to get these dolphins warmed up. And it was like, you know, they aren't, you're not in Miami anymore, guys. It's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Kansas city and it's the coldest it's been in a long damn time. So yeah. Yeah, they were, they were definitely, they in over their heads, I think is a good way to, to put it. Cause they just did not look like they wanted to be out there watching the broadcast the next day, looking at Tua's body language, especially as the game wore on that guy looked decimated. Not just yeah. physically, but mentally as well. He looked overwhelmed. His first playoff game, mind you. So this is his very first experience in the postseason as a starter. <laughs> and it's in one of the harshest environments you can think of. Cold as hell yeah. in Arrowhead against the Chiefs. Like That's three elements that are a recipe for a disaster for, for the Dolphins. And that's, in, that's what ended up happening. Yeah. I think it all... Yeah. Really, it starts with the defense, right? We can jump into what the defense and the offense did here. Uh, It starts with McDuffie and Snead. They were all over Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. I don't think Jalen Waddell had any kind of meaningful pass that he caught until the fourth quarter. So he was almost non-existent, even coming off an injury. 
And then Tyree Kill, right? We saw the the touchdown on McDuffie, obviously. I would contest that if you're going to foul him, do it in a way that he cannot catch that ball so that he doesn't just like make our guys look like the Three Stooges and score a touchdown off of that. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, you saw Legereus Sneed bury him off the line on on those routes within the five yards, so legal contact there. And then McDuffie just drilling him on that screen pass, too. They were very physical with 10 uh, in that game, and it showed. It showed. I think he was definitely very much beat up through, throughout that game, and that's the best way to kill speed is to, is to rough him up. And so we yep. did that with their – you know, with their guys. 100%. And, and a couple other guys to note on the defense really had a great show across the board, uh, whether it's linebackers, secondary, D line. You know, obviously, obviously, Carl Loftus went out, got those two sacks. That guy gets yeah. better every single game, man. It, he kind of, it kind of felt like he had a little bit of a plateau um, last season at the rookie season, but this year leads the team in sacks and comes out and has two more in the postseason. Um, I'm looking forward to that guy being, uh, you know, another great guy to have on the defense long term. And uh, a yep. couple other guys I want to know here, Mike Edwards, another great play, gets the interception. And then you have to talk about Nick Bolton when you talk about this defense, man. That guy is the absolute one. He's the absolute leader. But two, he is he might be the fastest guy on the defense, man. He is so lightning fast. And when he catches you, <laughs> he cracks your ass, dude. And he's sideline oh, yeah. to sideline. He does not stop. And I mean, he is the forefront of the run defense there. You know, obviously, you got, the got, you got your guys at the D line who really, uh, you know, soak up a lot of those blocks. But, man, Nick Bolton can squeeze through a gap and really crack you in the backfield, man. Oh, yeah. He was all over the place. And, I mean, doing it with basically a club on one hand, like the dude was one-handed throughout that game. And just his ability to to wrap those guys up still in that cold weather, you know that didn't feel good on his hand at all. So just seeing him do that, not to mention the, the plays that Mike Edwards was making in the back end too, helping those guys in the front seven, helping, you know, Snead and McDuffie in their coverages as well, forcing that, that early pick onto a, all of that was fantastic. I think Mike Edwards is slowly working his way towards a big payday um, in the off season, whether it be us or another team. So Love having him. Love having Bolton. Um, man, I mean, the defense was just firing on all cylinders and 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 taking away anything the Dolphins were trying to get from us on offense. Yeah, and really looking forward for for the Chiefs fans. Looking forward for the rest of the season. You know, this has been the most consistent group maybe in football. You know, the the only team right. to not allow I think what was it thirty one points is what I saw today. But really, they they haven't. I mean, week in and week out, we have. We've had weeks where we're missing Bolton. We, you know, we missed Chris Jones for a little bit. We've missed several guys throughout the season, and it's just like next man up, and the defense stays in the same little groove, and they just they just bend and don't break, and they they punish yep. you for every every yard you make that you get punished for, and you really have to earn it. And I I think if you know if things pan out for the Chiefs and we make it and we're, we're dancing in February. It is really solely because of what the defense has done, and they've done a, a phenomenal job, Thousand man. They've been lights out, lights out. Thousand percent. So Could not agree other more. side, of, other side of the football, man. Uh, obviously, looked a, a lot better, you know, this week compared to the last, you know, let's say two months, really. So you know, things did change. So we still got a couple things to work out, you know, one being penalties. Yeah. We saw a couple penalties kind of hurt us there in the red zone Two It's got to be the red zone offense period. And then we did see a couple drops and specifically Travis Kelsey had three himself really out of character with him. He dropped a would be touchdown. I think at the three or four yard line, uh, he, he would have easily walked yeah. that one in, but, um, I don't anticipate that being a reoccurring th theme for Travis Kelsey, right? So we can expect the same for penalties in red zone, though, because that's been the MO for the whole season. It looked better. It looked better. You know, I, I, you can't deny that at all, but it, it, it was still crippling where you go into playing a Buffalo, a, a Bills team in Buffalo, those mistakes can't happen, right? Because we could be looking at a one, two, three point game where those touchdowns mean that much more than kicking those four field goals. Right. So it's going to be right. crucial that they really dial this thing in 
And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of offense we see come out. So, you know, a, a couple other things we want to look at here is, is Rasheed Rice going to come out and, 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 and produce the same as what he just did this last yeah. week. Like you said, 130 yards with the tutty should have been two tutties, but, uh, Patrick Mahomes played great football again. I mean, I think the thing that stands out for me for Patrick Mahomes is, is the runs. You know, he ran different against mm -hmm. the Dolphins than he has all season, right? So, you know, obviously he's protecting himself all season, preparing for something, preparing for a run in, in January and February. But, you know, here's the time where, where Pat's really lowering his shoulder and getting after it and kind of kind of similar runs to what we saw against the Titans several years ago back in 2019 where – he had that uh, that mm -hmm. run against the Titans and, and scored from about 20 <laughs> yards out. So, I mean, my man looks fresh. He looks good. And it was funny because he actually in the post game presser was like, you know, vintage Pat would have scored that, would have gotten the end zone on that run. And yeah. you know, everything everything you said about you know his confidence and and kind of every everything that he brought to this game in particular, I I mean, I I saw it too. You could tell the energy around this team was different on the offensive side of the ball. They came out there trusting each other. They came out there confident. If somebody messed up, it didn't deter them from trying that again. I mean, we saw that with McCole Hardman on his couple of plays, right? He couldn't track the ball on that first deep one. He gave up on the other pass on that deep route. But yep. it didn't stop Holmes from distrusting everybody on the offense, right? He hit MVS in stride for a first down. I freaked out in the stands when I realized he caught that ball. Uh, he kept throwing the ball to Travis Kelsey at the back end of the game so that he could redeem himself for those three drops or at least yep. attempt to do it. And And everything that Mahomes was taking on the ground, it was him finding lanes a little bit better and finding those open spaces. <clears throat> it was just a totally different Chiefs offense than what we've seen all all year come out there. And even though we do have the red zone issues, right, we left 12 points on the board legitimately, I think anyway. Like one of the of those four field goals, Harrison Butker kicks, I think one of them deserved to be a field goal. The other ones, we we left those points on the board. So we got to execute better. We got to make sure we don't have and, – and you're going to have penalties, there's going to be some moments where you're not 100% disciplined or where something might come up and you have to do a last-ditch effort to protect your quarterback or to try and get get a hole open. Like That's understandable. It's going to happen. The worst thing that happens to us is it always happens in a key moment. It's yeah. always happening on a touchdown. It's always happening on a conversion or a third and short that makes it a third and long or on yeah. first or second down. Now we're at second and 25. It's those kind of penalties or it's happening in the red zone that are killing us in these instances. And, you know, the block in the back, I thought that was kind of soft personally because Jawan Taylor got pushed from behind as well. Um, now, by the rule, by the, you know, the letter of the law, he did touch <laughs> the back of Justin Houston. And sure, you can make that argument. It just sucks because Justin Houston's not making that play and tackling Rasheed yeah. Rice on that play. He wasn't right. anywhere near him. And you, when you run that clip back, you can see that Taylor is simultaneously getting pushed in the back as well. So it's just one of those things that's a little tough on that particular call. But, you know, the false starts, the holdings, just clean it up a little bit because going to get up against Buffalo next week, we can't afford to make mistakes like that. We have to be as close to perfect as possible. And we got to come out there with the same swagger, the same moxie as we came out with this week. And man, just watching them go out there and do that in cold weather where they just had a total mental block about what was going on. If you were just watching that clip without, you know, being able to see the breath coming out of their their helmets as they're walking around, you'd think they were playing in a, you know, 70 degree fall afternoon because the yeah. way that they were working around in the offense and running, Pacheco was physical. They were just Ooh. taking whatever they wanted um, until we got inside the 10. So um, yeah. clean that part it up. And man, we're going to be poised for a really strong run the rest of this playoffs. Yeah, man, I'm excited. And a guy you just talked about, Pacheco, man, when that guy runs, it's like he runs like a horse, man. I mean, he just like gallops. And it's just like, holy shit, man. If you run in front of that guy, like that is going to hurt. That dude runs Good freaking hard. luck, it, dude. 
Man, I mean, it's just like lightning strikes every time his foot hits the ground, dude. It's crazy to watch him run. That's so much fun. Well, I love the team aspect behind him, too, where it was like he would get stopped up and then the rest of the team would just be right there and have his back and push him across. We probably picked up an extra 10, 12 yards just on those type of plays last night. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, you'd love to see that for sure. But uh, Dan, let's get into the AFC playoff, the playoff picture as it stands right now. Obviously, you said that that uh, Buffalo um, has moved on, and we we will be in Buffalo. But um, bringing this in with E Coffee, another sponsor that we love to talk about on the show. Um, Dan and I both wake up to their coffee every morning. They have multiple different coffees that you can get from all around the world. You know, they have a great different set of blends that you can you can jump into and really experience, uh, have different experiences with your coffee when you're trying to, you know, dabble around with some different stuff. So you can get some swag there. You can get some stickers, some hats, some different stuff. You can get some subscriptions as well. You can get, you know, coffee sent to your house every month or every three months or or however you want to set it up for six months long or however you want to do it, they'll take care of you for sure. And the, the really the best part about eCoffee is um, one is the story that they have there at eCoffee. You can check that out on their website. Um, but two, they are local to here in Kansas City. So we love to take care of those folks local here in Kansas City. So be sure to check them out at eCoffee.com. That's with two E's. So Dan, bring us into the playoff picture, my brother. Yeah, man, everything with the playoffs we saw in Wild Card Weekend, I was not expecting a blowout for Houston against Cleveland. That game was kept really close, actually. Uh, in the beginning, 17-14, I want to say it wasn't half, and then back-to-back pick sixes, and all of a sudden, the, the, the Texans are up 38-14. to It's like, what the hell happened? Uh, yeah. They end up cleaning, cleaning up against the Browns, 45-14. The rookie C.J. Stroud balling out, man. Um, the Ravens got their work cut out for them next week. It's not going to be just a gimme game for them against the Houston Texans. I think that's going to be a really good matchup in the divisional round in Baltimore. And then, of course, Buffalo and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, you know, surprised me after starting off really slow. They made a strong little run. I think they put up like they went in like a 17 to three run. Yeah. Between, you know, middle of the second quarter up until about early fourth. And then the Bills, you know, realized where they were came out of their days from getting punched in the mouth and closed it up against them so bills take care of business we're going on the road and playing that first game we took care of our first step right first step in this process is to get miami out of here take care of business at home and do what we do in arrowhead and that got done now we got to go to buffalo and orchard park somewhere we haven't played since covid the stadium was empty in 2020 when we last went there and won against Josh Allen and the Bills. We got to go take care of business, and it's going to be just as cold, if not colder, uh, next Sunday night as it was here in Kansas City and Arrowhead. Probably more snow, too. More snow than what we're dealing with here in Kansas City. So, um, you know, I think these guys are positioned for for this game, having just played in the elements similar to what they're going to get in Buffalo. And... They take care of business out there, and on the other side of them is going to be waiting either Baltimore, a road trip for us, or we're going to host Houston. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting stuff, man, for sure. I think I'm when banking I, I checked on the weather six here, straight. <laughs> I, I checked the weather here, and uh, for the game in Buffalo, it's going to be in the 20s next week or on Sunday, and uh, like mid, you know, kind of sunny. Oh, the scorcher. Kinda, Mix up, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be steamy hot up there. <laughs> that's that's yeah, almost so, sixty degrees hotter than what we had Saturday night. Wow. <laughs> so it'll be a uh, it'll be a pretty decent game for sure. Kind of a, a you know mid game. You know both teams playing that kind of weather pretty often. So I, I don't think there's any favor going either way there. And I, I think the early line right now sits at negative or minus two and a half, minus three going Buffalo's way. So as Vegas sees it, it's a pretty heads up match. Yeah, I mean, you factor in that three points for for the home team. I think this game, we'll, we'll obviously talk about it more later in the week, but, you know, I think this is very a very doable, winnable road for the Chiefs. We just need to do what we did against Miami and limit those mistakes and ride that defense as long as possible. Let, let that defense yeah. carry, jump on the backs of those guys. 
be physical, man. Like Buffalo's defense is kind of decimated right now. They had some more injuries today. And, you know, if we can let Pacheco kind of carry that, carry that up, we'll be in decent shape to, to potentially host or go on the road. And then on the NFC side, surprising elimination for Dallas. So not going to be a Chiefs Cowboys Super Bowl. Sorry, uh, Bill Barnwell, your prediction is going to be a little bit off in that regard. But, uh, you know, San Fran, Detroit look good. Philly's playing right now against Tampa. Down there's going to be there's going to be some good matchups in that Super Bowl with the with the teams that are alive in the NFC too. Yep, yep. Got a lot of football left. Uh, football fans, you can't remember, you can't forget to enjoy it because man, we are really dwindling down the amount of football games we got left. So soak all this up. If you got to separate yourself for a little bit, go watch a little football. The family's up there eating dinner. You got to squeeze away. You got to go watch the football, man. You got to soak this up. Yep. Take it all in. Take it all in. I know we will. Well, Trey, I'm glad we're, we survive in advance, baby. We're making it to the divisional round. We'll take on the Buffalo Bills and Buffalo. Talk more about that uh, or later this week, rather. Uh, make sure you follow the show at the fastest underscore 40 on IG, on X. We have a Facebook page as well. We did that ticket giveaway. We probably are going to do some merch giveaways. Um, our partners at eCoffee are going to throw us a couple coffee bags. We'll try and give those away throughout the playoffs as well. Um, so a lot of fun stuff going on here at the Fastest 40. And and make sure you you give us a shout out on, on Spotify as well. Give us a review on Apple and check out the Odyssey app, Odyssey Sports app. So appreciate everybody. Got anything for the people, Trey? Let's go, Chiefs. That's right, baby. Peace.